Hi and welcome to my vlog. My name is Amelia and this is So Amelia where I talk all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. This week I am recreating one of my favourite high street dresses and seeing if I can get this finished in time to go to the knitting and stitching show. So one of my favourite ready to wear labels is Mulby the label. I hope that's how you say it. I just love their style, I love their dresses, and I saw recently on the Marzi Fabrics website a fabric which looks very similar to the one that they use to make their dresses, and I thought it would be really fun to see if I could recreate the look using patterns and fabric that I have at home. I will have shared a few images of the dress that I'm hoping to recreate. It is the most beautiful dress with a lovely seam at the waistline and then a knee length skirt with a ruffle and this glorious collar detail at the front. Here's the fabric that I got from Lamazi Fabrics and it is this gorgeous blue gingham seersucker. Now I think this can be quite autumnal, especially if, as I'm planning to do, I put the frill on the collar using this dark navy blue cotton which I had in my stash from making some shorts for my daughter for school. I think those two will go really well together and I think the dark navy will really pull out the navy in the fabric and make it feel quite autumnal. So I'll pop a link to this fabric in the box below. This navy cotton was just picked up from my local haberdashery. I'm sure you can get navy cotton in many different places but this gingham seersucker I did buy from Lamazi so I'll link that in the description box. Patterns that I'm hoping to use are the Bakerloo dress. Now this is going to form the basis of the pattern because I think that the shape of this pattern is the closest to the inspiration dress. It is a bodice that is fitted to the waist and then it has that gathered skirt and it also has the large collar. What I am going to do is I'm going to change the collar and I'm going to use the collar from the Friday Pattern Company Patina Blouse because the shape of that collar with the points at the bottom and that v-neck I think is closer to the inspiration dress. So I've got the Bakerloo dress, the Patina Blouse collar and then Rosary Apparel, or Janelle, who is on YouTube, shared a little while ago three free sleeve templates. Now one of those I used in the winter to make a beautiful big sleeve for a red corduroy dress that I made. So I'm going to use that sleeve pattern because, again, I think that's going to be closest to the inspiration. So this is really a Franken dress. I've got the Bakerloo dress by Nina Lee, the Friday Pattern Company patina blouse, and a free sleeve template from Rosary Apparel but I think that together those will make the perfect dress. I have cut out all of the pattern pieces and what I needed to do before I started cutting was just to check the front bodice piece. Now the Bakerloo blouse and dress does have a round neckline here with the collar pieces. Obviously I needed to change that or redraft it so that it had the v-neck. So what I did was I laid the pattern piece for the patina front bodice over the top of the Bakerloo bodice, I lined them up and I drew in the new V-shaped neckline on my Bakerloo blouse piece. Then I traced that out so that I'm ready to cut that out of my fabric. Now these things are always a bit of a risk. You don't know how they're gonna turn out, but I'm super excited to have a go at sewing this up. I've had a few sewing fails recently or things that just haven't quite turned out the way I hoped. And I just love the Bakerloo dress. I've sewn this so many times in so many different fabrics with a lot of different hacks. It's definitely one of my favorite patterns to sew. And so I think this one will turn out just right. At least I know it's going to fit because I've sewn it so many times before. Now I prefer a more fitted bodice. So I actually size down on the bodice and then I pop in an invisible zip at the back, which means I cut the back piece in two pieces so that I can put that zipper up the front. I also then cut the back skirt in two pieces so that I can run the zipper down into the skirt piece to allow me enough room to pop that dress on. Now because it's winter, because I'm going to be wearing this over boots and tights and things, I'm not going to line the dress. This is a beautiful cotton gingham, it's got good structure, it doesn't need to be lined. So I'm not going to line it. And actually if I really need the extra warmth, I can quite easily put a nice dark blue roll neck top underneath this. I have one I made last year in a cotton jersey, I think it's the Freya top by Tilly and the Buttons. So I'm not worried in terms of warmth with this piece and I'm not worried in terms of the fabrication to bother with the lining. So it should be, I hope, a relatively straightforward sew. Famous last words. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna pop on during the week and let you know as I make progress with this make, how it's getting on, and hopefully by the end of the week, when I share this video with you, I will have a successful dress <laughs> that's fashioned after the inspiration piece that I love so much. Ha <laughs> ha!
Hello, it is Tuesday and I'm back in the sewing room and I thought I'd catch you up on my progress so far with the dress. So not huge amounts of progress because our week has been quite busy so far, uh, but I just thought I'd let you know where I was at. So, so far I have the front bodice, I have sewn together at the shoulders and I've sewn up one of the side seams. I did cut this back in two pieces because before when I've put the invisible zip in, I've put it in at the back. And then I suddenly realized I can't do the invisible zip at the back if I'm going to put the patina collar on because the patina collar goes in one piece all the way around the back. And then obviously it finishes down here. So that left me with a little bit of a problem, but not too big of a problem because there's always a solution. What I did was I left, oh no, that's the side I've sewn together. I left this side open because I'm going to put in a side zipper. Now that will work because I can pull this neckline over my head no problem and I'll attach the sleeves which will close up that top section there. It's obviously unlined but I will be putting an invisible zip down here and down through into the skirt. So whilst on the Bakerloo dress you would be doing the closure at the back at the very beginning of the pattern, I obviously won't be able to do my side zipper until fairly close to the end actually just before I set in the sleeves. So that's as far as I've got with that so far. Then I overlocked my pocket pieces and things because I just like to do all of the overlocking at one time. So I've also overlocked down the side of the skirt pieces, but you obviously don't need to see that. And then what I have done is I've cut out the ruffle pieces in this navy blue cotton and I have cut out and interfaced the collar pieces. I'm going to flick over to the patina pattern now to sew up the collar pieces and to insert the ruffle. So inserting the ruffle into the collar is not my favorite thing to do. You'll actually see I'm wearing a Bakerloo dress today. Now for this version, I actually put lace around the collar, which went in a lot more easily, but I did do one version with the fabric ruffle and it did take me two, three, maybe even four goes uh, with unpicking and re-sewing each time. So I'm hoping this won't see the unpicker quite as much, but you never know because obviously there's quite a sharp point here. So I've got to get that ruffle lying really nicely on that point. I've got about an hour now before I need to go and pick up the children. So I'm going to see how much of that collar I can get done. So I suspect I'll just get that ruffle sewn together and pressed gathered maybe and then I'll start pinning that onto the collar. I'm not sure I'll get much further than that, but we'll see. I'm really hoping that this will be sewn up in time for Saturday. I'm cutting it a little fine um, because my sewing time in the week is limited. I'm hoping I'll have it done in time for the knitting and stitching show. So as predicted, it's Wednesday night and I'm back up in the sewing room finally. I haven't got much done this week and if I'm honest, I'm not sure I'm going to get this dress made in time. So what I have been doing is ruffling up, you can just see it peeking out here, ruffling up the navy blue fabric for the ruffle and then basting it and pinning it into place. So now tonight I am ready to try and sew on the ruffle. I think from memory when I made the Bakerloo dress with the fabric collar, it is the collar that takes the longest time. I mean... It's just quite fiddly making sure that you sew up these points neatly whilst not catching any of the fabric of the ruffle that you don't want to catch. <laughs> so yeah, I think from memory this bit takes ages, probably longer than the rest of the dress put together. Maybe not, perhaps I'm exaggerating, but I think it will look really cute at the end, obviously. <laughs> not that way around. There you go. I think it will look really cute at the end with the little blue ruffle peeking out the side here. So yeah, that's tonight. I've got about an hour now before bedtime. It's been a busy, busy week here. And like I said, I'm hopeful, but not confident that this will be finished in time. I'm going to get on with that tonight. If I do finish this, obviously the next job will be to attach this to the bodice. And to be quite honest with you, if I can get that finished tonight, then I'll be in a good place because then all I've got left is to attach the skirt, the zip and do the hem. The zip will be the big one because I'm just not very confident putting in side seam zippers. It's not something I've done very much. So I have got some instructions because when I made the Deer and Doe Orchid Day dress, I did put a side seam zipper in that. So I'm going to go find the instructions for that dress so that I have some tips for how to put in a side seam zipper. I'm going to go get on with my collar and I shall catch up with you all soon. Good morning, 
it's Thursday morning and I've got an hour or two to myself this morning and I'm going to work on the dress. So I'll show you what I got up to last night. Here is the finished bodice. So I'm really pleased with how that collar went on in the end. It's sitting really nicely on top here and I finished off the inside with a bias binding just so that I could get that V at the bottom looking really neat. There's a great online tutorial from Frugalissimo about how to use a bias binding for a v-neck top. So I'll link that in the description box below. And then I added a little Kylie in the machine label. I'd rather be sewing, or I'm probably thinking about sewing it says. So that's done. So I'm going to put that to one side for now because I can't work on the zip closure until I've got the skirt done. So that's today's job. So I'm going to put the pockets on, gather the skirt up, and then see if I can put that onto the bodice. Okay, I'm so excited. I've just tried it on and it fits, which is to be expected because I have made this pattern so many times. I'm not even looking at the instructions. Um, I'll hold it up like this for you. Oh, I, I love this fabric so much. It's totally my colors. I love navy blue. I love this vibrant blue. And I think this just makes the color stand out. It's just gorgeous. Now the only question I have is to ruffle or not to ruffle along the hem of the dress. So I have to go downstairs now because I've sewn for about an hour and a half and the housework is, yeah, it's still not done. So I'm gonna go down and sort that out now, make the dinner, do all of the jobs that need to be done. And then I can come back up and do perhaps a little bit of sewing this afternoon before I go on the school run, but we'll just have to see if there's time. But I'm really pleased. I'm feeling more and more like I might just about get this finished in time. It is only Thursday, so I've got another day but I do need to set in the sleeves. I need to gather the sleeves, set them in, and what I'm gonna do for the cuffs is just elasticate them. That's what the Inspiration dress has, is just simple elasticated cuffs. So that shouldn't be too much of a drama. Again, I shouldn't say that, because then there will be drama. Hopefully the sleeves will go in nice and easily. The bit I'm more worried about is getting in this invisible zip nicely. I'm gonna put a little strip of interfacing along this seam just to reinforce that before I put the zip in, just to give it a bit of added strength. And then I'll pop in the invisible zip. It should be all right, shouldn't it? I mean, it's not uh, not too much drama. We'll get there. Um, so I think what the next step will be, will be putting in that invisible zip. I'm gonna leave the hem for now because I'm still deciding whether or not to add a ruffle. I don't want the dress to be too long. And if I add a ruffle, it will become more of like a midi dress which isn't a bad thing, but I'm not sure I want a midi dress for this one. I think I want it to be just knee length. I'm gonna go and do the housework, ponder ruffles, and just have a minute before I put in this invisible zip to just make sure I, I think I know what I'm gonna do. I just can't tell you how much I loved trying it on. I'm getting really excited about it, and I think it does look like the inspiration dress, which is great. Hi, I'm back. I did the chores, I had a little bit of time for the school run, and I've actually managed to put the zip in, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, it has taken me about an hour, but then these things take time. So I've popped it in in the side seam here. What I do like to do with these side seams is because I have made them before and they, I guess there's a point of tension just here under the arm where it does up, and then there's a point of tension down here near the pocket seam where you keep pushing them down. So I have actually done not a bar tack, I've just gone back and forth here over the top of the seam here just to strengthen that up a little bit and also then to hold the zipper flat on the back. And then at the bottom of the zip I have popped on a little piece of fabric because there's nothing worse than the bottom of the zip going against your skin and I probably will be wearing tights under this but still so I've just put a little strip of fabric across the bottom of that zip just so that it doesn't bother me in terms of being a bit sharp and just annoying. So that's the zip, it's gone in. I have checked the fit, it's great. The zip works. <laughs> I'm always worried with invisible zips that they'll break on the day, but so far so good. I'm not sure if I'll get back up to the sewing room tonight, so we're definitely cutting things fine because I have got to get two sleeves on yet and decide if I'm gonna pop a ruffle on the bottom or not. So yes, will it be done in time? I hope so. 
I think so. I'm glad to have had quite a good chunk of sewing time today. If you watch my channel, you'll know we've had quite a lot of sickness. Um, and Thursdays are normally my day to have the house to myself. Everyone's out at school and nursery. So sometimes I do like to get a little bit of self-care sewing in on a Thursday. But it has been a while because everyone's been sick and at home. So it was really nice to get that time today to do some sewing. I'm going to go and get the children from school and I'm going to hopefully get some sleeves on tonight and then I'll decide about the ruffle. Friday and I have got most of the dress so I will show you what I've got here is the dress it has sleeves and I did put on the ruffle but I think the ruffles too long I actually think I'm going to take about 10 inches off the skirt now don't panic I am going to use that fabric for something else I have some plans but I think I'm actually going to take quite a lot off the length of the skirt as it is I like the length of the skirt without the ruffle, but I think I do want to add the ruffle just for that extra ruffliness. So I'm going to trim about 10 inches off the skirt, put the ruffle back on, and then I think I'll be done. I've got to hem it, obviously. But I'll pop in a picture so you can see what it looks like now at this length. But I really do think it's going to look better slightly shorter. So hopefully you agree because I'm going to do it anyway, uh, because hopefully by the time you see this, I'll have a finished dress. I'm going to go finish this ruffle off. Re I've got to take it off. I only pinned it in place so I could check the fit. Take the pins out, redo the ruffle, hem the dress, and it's done. Very excited. I didn't think I'd get it finished in time, but there you go. So I'm going to head off now, see if I can get that finished in the next hour or so, and I'll be ready for the knitting and stitching show. it and I'm so excited that it's done. I have a finished dress ready for tomorrow so I ended up putting the ruffle on. I actually trimmed off about nine inches in the end and then I've put this ruffle on. So I ended up finishing the hem with bias binding. I do love the finish of a bias bound hem and I thought since I bias bound the neckline it would be nice to finish the hem in a similar way just for continuity I suppose <laughs> and because it made me happy. Now I have kept the elastic on the sleeves a little looser than I would normally do because it is still that kind of weather where it warms up during the day. So I want to be able to push these sleeves up and make them sort of three quarter length sleeves just to give me a little bit of relief from the heat. I don't actually know how I'm gonna style this tomorrow. I haven't worked that out yet. Perhaps with some tights and boots, not sure. The weather's so nice today. There's a little bit of a chill to the air, but the sun is out and it's just glorious outside. So I'm gonna go and take all this footage, <laughs> see if I can get this edited and uploaded ready for you for tomorrow morning to watch. So I do hope you enjoy seeing this dress come together. So if you have enjoyed watching, do please give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and become one of my regular viewers. It's been so lovely seeing a lot more of you subscribe recently, and I'm so thrilled that you want to follow along. Seeing what I'm getting up to with my sewing each week, it's lovely to have you along. And I do love chatting with you all in the comments too. So do leave one down below if you enjoyed seeing this dress. If you've made a hack like this yourself, or if you want to, do leave me a comment and let me know below. So, from me and my dress, so thrilled I got it finished, so looking forward to wearing it tomorrow and seeing lots of lovely people at the Knitting and Stitching show. So, I'm going to wrap it up there. I hope you have a lovely week ahead, filled with lots of lovely, happy sewing, and I shall see you in the next one. 
Goodbye.